If you are a scientist and you are confused about statistics, you're not really sure how it fits in with your science, this is the video for you. I'm going to go through what statistics is and some introduction into statistics for scientists. So let's start with what is statistics. It's essentially a branch of applied mathematics that involves the collection, description, analysis, and inference of conclusions from quantitative data. So being once you have collected your quantitative data, how do you actually describe it? Um, how do you analyze it? And how do you draw inferences to the greater population instead of just the sample that you analyzed? And there are two different main types of statistics. The first one is descriptive. So this de summarizes and describes a specific data set. And the second one is inferential. So this makes predictions or inferences about a population based on a sample. And most of what we do in science is inferential and descriptive. So we describe our data set and then we use statistical tests to say whether this actually means anything towards the greater population. So now that we know what it is, how do we actually use it within science? The first one is informing our data collection. We, if we want to be able to describe it in specific ways, we have to collect the data in specific ways. If we want to be able to make inferences to the general population, we have to collect data in specific ways. And so whenever we have our hypothesis and we know we want to test it, we're going to use statistics to make sure that the way that we collect our data, we can actually use to test our hypothesis. We also use this in data analysis. So anything like a mean or an average, that's actually a statistic of a sample data set, and that would be descriptive statistics. Hypothesis testing as well. So being able to actually test a hypothesis and see, does it actually make sense for the greater population? If I have an example that exercise uh, decreases depression scores, being able to take that information from a specific sample of the population can describe whether for those that received exercise versus didn't exercise, did they have higher or lower depression scores? But that doesn't mean that I can just say, okay, that sample did it, did the general population do it? We use statistics to make those inferences about hypothesis testing. And then predictive modeling. So being able to not only say, okay, this is what we found, is it generalizable to the population, but can we actually predict based off of these um, variables of a person, can we predict this additional variable? So all of that is be using statistics within science. So whenever you're running into different problems within your science, these are the different problems that you're actually going to use statistics to solve. So the first one is determining the reliability and the precision of measurements. So being able to tell is your um, method actually accurate? So for example, if I took two different ways to analyze, let's say estrogen within serum, let's say I did an ELISA and I did mass spectrometry and I got slightly different measurements. So I took three measurements on each of the exact same sample and I got slightly different measurements. But my variability within my three measurements taken was not zero, which means that we can actually use statistics to determine are those two measurements accurate with each other within their margin of error. We also have statistics for precision to determine how reliable within a sample can we actually get measurements? So if we measure a sample 15 times, do we get really broad ranges from the same sample or really narrow ranges from the same sample? And that gives us our precision. In being able to summarize and describe our data. So when we want to say things like the average um, blood glucose for our sample was, we're going to use statistics to determine that. If we wanna talk about the variability within our sample, we also use descriptive statistics to determine that as well. Determining if two groups are actually different. And so we can, let's say we ran an analysis, we have two different groups of data, and we say, okay, this group has a mean that's slightly above this group's mean. We can't necessarily say that that actually means that those two groups are different. Because if the variability within those two groups is large and they actually overlap, then they're not actually different. And so we use statistics to determine within our confidence level, how different are two groups really from each other. And then we also use it to understand the relationship between variables. 
Maybe we're trying to tell the difference between exercise frequency and BMI. And so the relationship between those two, we can use statistical methods to determine if those are actually related to each other. Identifying outliers and anomalies. So whenever we're collecting data, we might think that one point seems really odd. Um, and so we can use statistical tests to determine if that point is mathematically an outlier. And then we use practical knowledge to determine if it actually makes sense to include that as an outlier. Is there an explanation for why that point would be an outlier and is it representative of the population we're studying? We can also use it to test any hypothesis. And so in, in, in any hypothesis driven research, we're going to use statistics to be able to test our hypothesis. And as we talked about predictive modeling earlier, we can test it. We use statistics to predict future outcomes. And so if we have variables and we want to know or, or predict a variable, we can use statistics to be able to do that as well. So all of these problems you're going to encounter within your scientific experience experiments, even if you're doing observational studies, you're going to need to be able to determine, is this actually different? Are these two variables related? Anything like that. And whenever we're doing that, we're going to be using statistics to solve it. So within this series of statistics for scientists, I'm going to be covering all the different things that the majority of scientists would need to know about statistics in order to do their work. If you are interested in getting access to these videos early and being able to download all of the slides that I have in these videos, check out my Research Mastery Academy. It includes all of my courses around um, research design, research writing, and even dissertation writing. It also includes data analysis and it includes all of these YouTube videos on there as well, easily searchable. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.